music. Yes, you do, Clark Gregg. Something scary is about to happen. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just celebrated its 50th episode Tuesday nights, 9 Eastern time on ABC. The man who plays Agent Phil Coulson right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you, Clark Gregg. Good to see you. How Rich are you Eisen. doing? I'm really good. Yeah? Really nice to be here. I'm thrilled that you are here. I want to open up by just saying what a longtime fan I've been of yours. Oh, my gosh. And uh, when you and Stuart were together over at uh, ESPN was really fantastic days for me. Well, that's nice of you to say. That's really true. That means a lot, Clark. You know, Stuart, Stuart would love to hear that from you, too, because I'm, I'm, he's a, he was a big fan of everything like Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything that you do. So well. that's funny. So I met him once a long, long time was ago. Was a Carolina guy. Really? Yeah, North that's right. Carolina. Of course, I did yeah, know yeah. that. But this was in Venice at a pickup basketball court, and he showed up there one day, and people were like, "Oh my God, do you know who that is? Do you know who that is?" Right. And uh, and played with us, and I was sitting sitting down, like because I probably lost. Right. And um and he came over, and he was, and I had done almost nothing. Uh, on, and See, he, I told you, he, and, yeah. And, he and came he, up. I done, I was on West Wing in a recurring role, mm -hmm. and he came over, and was like, "Hey man, I love what you do." And he knew it was West Wing, and right. it was, I was like, okay, this Hollywood thing might be okay. If Stuart Scott <laughs> knows who I am, I feel like I'm going to be okay. But it was so classy yeah. and kind, and I just, He's a good dude. I didn't think I could love him more. Mm. Yeah, me too. And uh, but, but knowing him too, on the court, was he over-competitive? Was he ultra-competitive too? Then, see, that you're talking about a relative term. <laughs> Compared to me, was he over competitive? Yeah. yeah. No, I think it was a flat. I bet he was a shooter. He was better. I'm yeah, sure. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I was, so was I. Oh, yeah. You know. So what's your game? What's your game on the court? My game increasingly is uh -huh. um, run, run a lot. Okay. Try to outrun people. Are you scrappy? And, is that what you're saying? Are you scrappy? Do you get down on the floor, Clark? Is that what you do for the I've loose been ball? Known to, I've been known to dive for, for a ball. <laughs> I, I have to compensate for the lack of, of real talent. Um, and I park myself in the corner and I drop a few threes. So you spot up, a bit of a spot and, up, and you and do you call for the ball? Are you are you vocal when you're spotting up? Do you, do not, you in call the, for not in the obnoxious way that comes to mind when you say that. I right. mean, when there's no other option, yes, and they want a knockdown shooter. If they want three points, yes, sometimes I will suggest that they should pass <laughs> the ball to me. See, I don't think that certainly in a 30 oh, second. Hey, hey, there's yeah. me putting in a layup. We're showing you oh, basically. Oh my God, that's the entertainment league. Oh, look, that might be the championship trophy in my hands there. Yeah, who which are you I playing? I have the least to do of anyone on that team in, in achieving. Who are you playing with in that one? Great guys, great guys. Is that uh, in a league in, in, out here in LA? It's or? a league out here. I've been playing in it off okay. and on for, for years. A lot that. of actors, some rappers. In mm. the beginning, it was you saw Snoop Dogg and a lot of people out there. Yeah. But then they started to get some really. There are some people who are agents and stuff who played D1, and they started smacking some, some cocky shots into the rafters, and yeah. all of a sudden it was more people like me. Suddenly, and, um, yeah. They, uh, wow. James Lejeur, a great actor. Okay, um, that's cool. Chris Lloyd, who's the showrunner on Modern Family. Modern Family, Sam yeah. Daly and Tim Daly were on that team. So basically you just named half the people who go to Clippers games pretty much here. In the, it was in a Los strong, Angeles area. strong Clippers contingent on our team. I'm here with Clark Gregg here on the Rich Eisen Show. You are a you're a Clipper guy, or you, which which is your team? I'm basically? a member of the Clipper Nation. You yeah, are. yeah. I grew up. I moved around a lot as a kid, and mm -hmm. uh, Philly, Boston, uh -huh. Chicago, and uh, and then North Carolina, where we didn't have a team in those days, except for mm -hmm. Carolina, where mm -hmm. I went to high school, and Duke, where my dad taught. So that's the st that's the thing I want to hit on right here. Uh, Are you, how many people on planet Earth can say they root for both the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils? You Are know, you in the high school, I, I had to root for Carolina or I would be, have been beaten to death <laughs> at Chapel Hill High School. Right. But my dad had season tickets to Duke, and it was different days. It was Bill Foster. It was Spinarkle. It was Gene Banks. It was guys like Free that. Coach they had K. their moments. Sure. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't quite the Duke Dynasty, and then my dad left not long after I went to away to college at NYU, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's been at Stanford for a long time. So, it's I've pretty much shifted my loyalties to Duke, and I, I get endless endless grief about you it on Facebook. Be. Yeah, because but at one point you were able to be able to root for both teams, which I don't think you're able to do that. You have your Carolina card taken away from you in that respect too. I know, I know, but you we know. would you know there was ways to sneak into mm -hmm. Cameron Indoor. Not Cameron Indoor, that was the Duke one. The, before sure. they got the Dean oh, Dome, there was another thing called Carmichael. Sure. We did Old sneak into a few games school. there. Wow. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm here with Clark Gregg here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, plays Phil Coulson on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I want to hit you on that in a second. But what do you think of the current Clippers right now? Paul Pierce now in the mix. They, they went ahead and 
It's it's a great the, game against the, the Warriors Andre. the other I night. Know. Some kind of crucial mistakes down the down the. Uh... And Chris Paul was hurt at the end. Well, you're sitting in the final possession of the game, and uh, but but the Warriors appear to be the real deal once again. Uh, I, that looks. looks like. I mean, I may be a little biased, but that looks like a series I'm excited for this season. I feel sure. like the the Clippers went from having the worst preseason. I mean, uh, off season in history to it, well, it turned into Lance funny. Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Pierce and yeah. all these guys, they're great. Yeah. And they haven't even put Pablo in yet, and I think he's really good. Yeah, right. What do you think of the new logo? What do you think of the new logo? I don't, I don't want to lose my tickets. But, <laughs> well, um, most everybody here in, in Los Angeles is My, is, my is reaction lockstep. to it was instantaneous and visceral. Mm -hmm. It looked like it was designed by a computer studies grad student. It was kind of boxy and lost any of the elegance. They showed the Christmas uniform uh -huh. with the beautiful old cursive. Of, and I was like, just that, go with that. Yeah, right. Well, Balmer would probably turn to a computer guy, right? To figure this sort of stuff out. I don't know. I love what think. he's doing. I don't, you know. You, look at you. You don't want to. Suddenly, suddenly, Clark Gregg is, about the logo. is pushing his face up against the window, Damn it, Steve. looking at looking in uh, <laughs> Staples from from on the outside I know, looking in. I know. So uh, let's talk about your your show here, man. Uh, congratulations on doing something uh, for Marvel uh, because they they really need the help. I know. Uh, nothing's working out for them. They whatsoever. call me daily in gratitude, That's just the, that I'm I, keeping them afloat. <laughs> You're keeping things above water. They give a machine gun to a raccoon, and it's the biggest movie of all time. So, I mean, but what is the reaction you get from fans? It, it, speaking of visceral reaction, it, it appears that, is this the most visceral reaction you get to anything you've ever done in your career? Um, yeah, I, I think so, absolutely. I think mm -hmm. that's why there's a show. He was this kind of annoying, mm -hmm. snarky guy in a suit who mm -hmm. turned out to be Nick Fury's right-hand man. and different writer-director team, writer teams in the various movies kind of used him for different things and expanded him. And finally, Joss Whedon and the Avengers really figured out the true reason the fans connected to him, which is he's kind of a fanboy. He can't even really make a complete sentence around Captain America. And then he's the one who gets shanked by uh, <laughs> that evil Asgardian bastard, Loki. <laughs> And, uh, and he was dead, and I'd had a great run, and I was really happy, and uh, had gotten to act with some incredible actors, and then got a call. There were, actually, there was a bit of a, a movement, a social media movement. A hashtag movement, a as, hashtag. They, as the hashtag. I had my say. own hashtag, yeah. Colson Lives. And um, it, was, it was big enough that uh, I guess some people started talking, like, you know, maybe there's, there's an appetite for who this guy represents, which is... Who are the people without powers who are managing this world after the Avengers, where mm. aliens are among us and you know alien weaponry and the world is changing? And uh, suddenly we had a show, and that was 50 episodes and a lot of bruises from stunt combat ago. Yeah, 50 episodes now, halfway to the magical 100, and um, it doesn't seem to be any less appetite for these superhero shows and films in in our world these days. Uh, Comic Con must be a totally nutty experience going to something like that. For, I, for wish, I wish for everyone to have what a Comic-Con like? weekend like I get to have. What is that like? Um, I think it's, as I said, it's I get to be the avatar. I, I get to be, I'm kind of, if one of the people at Comic-Con was given a, a kind of starchy suit mm -hmm. and thrown into one of the movies, it would be me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so there's a lot of love. There's a lot of people dressed up like me. Not as much fun the year when they were dressed up like me with a, you know, as guardian scepter sticking out of my chest. Um, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah, it must be. I mean, and and because there's no Comic Con for West Wing, right? I'm, have, 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 have I missed that one? I An mean, Aaron Sorkin Con. If there's a non-nerdy Sor show, there could be a Sorkin Con. A Sorkin Con? Because I did a couple episodes of Sports Night. That's uh, right. Which I suspect you might have watched that show. I did. Of course I did. <laughs> and uh, at the end, uh, I played this mysterious character, Calvin Traeger, who uh, comes in for two episodes and buys the network. Yeah. Uh, and he says the great line that Aaron wrote as they were kind of not not picking up his show. If you can't make money, anyone who can't make money off sports night should get out of the money making business. <laughs> Which I thought was a delicious snarky barb. And, uh, and then they canceled the show. Yes. <laughs> but I do get an awful lot of passionate Sorkin fans coming of up course. to me. You're Calvin Traeger. Avengers from Avengers. Yeah. They're just like, you're Calvin Traeger. Well, I, I guess that you got a visceral reaction to that too. But Stuart and I watched sports night all the time. It was a terrific show. He's we, an amazing writer. We did, because Sorkin came up to Bristol to interview a lot of us to try and download some stories to put into sports night. And then Stuart and I would sit in our prefabricated cubicles in the middle of central Connecticut watching 
uh, an ivory tower studio in the middle of midtown Manhattan where these folks with the glass walls, the like looking out over Manhattan, we'd say, no, that, that's not our lives no. right there. East London? What was it? Where were well, well, yeah, well, no, uh, Bristol, Connecticut. Bristol, right. Yeah, beautiful Brist bucolic <laughs> Bristol is how we refer to it. You don't miss it, do you? You know what? <laughs> uh, it's in, it's in as they say, the rear view mirror. Yes. You know, but, uh, but it's, it was great times. With, and, and Stu and I would watch you and Josh Charles and, and that show. And Plus, we also didn't have, uh, you know, Robert Guillaume running around telling us what to do. You know, we didn't have that. That beautiful voice. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you, you uh, too. Clark. And, and congrats on everything that is going on in your career that's blowing up. And same to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, it is on 9 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday night on ABC Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. At Clark Gregg on Twitter as well. Good to see you, bud. At Rich Eisen. You bet. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.